Hello! Welcome back to another episode of Wildlife Wednesday. For this awesome episode, kasama namin si Doc Miguel De Leon, ang director ng Robert S. Kennedy Bird Conservancy. Kung matatandaan niyo, nakilala namin siya during our Philippine Eagle Quest. Ngayon, kasama naman namin siya dito sa Living Laboratory ng Robert S. Kennedy Bird Conservancy or RSKBC para ma-observe ang isa sa mga sought-after birds dito sa Pilipinas. Ang tinagari ang Jamante de Mindanao. Curious na ba kayo? Huwag na nating patagalin. Let's go! Mula sa matataas na bundok hanggang sa kasulok-sulukang gubat ultimate dream namin na madocument ang amazing landscapes at incredible wildlife dito sa Pilipinas. Ako si Dennis at ako naman si Celine kasama ng aming mobile home na si Eli the Camper Van kikilalanin at susubukan naming tunghayan ang lahat ng magic na meron tayo. Ito ang aming mga adventures. Kasama ang team ni Miguel, naglakad kami papunta sa aming destinasyon kung saan may front row seat kami to observe ang Jamante de Mindanao. Maputik ang daan at may mga streams na kailangan tawirin, pero maikli lang ang trail. Halos 20 minutes nang kami naglakad bago kami dumating dito sa observation deck. Ang tawag dito sa structure na ito ay hide. Kinonstruct ito ng team ni Miguel para makapag-observe with minimal disturbance sa environment. Itong structure ay tulad sa mga ginagawa ng mga katutubo dito sa area, using natural materials na dito lang din sa paligid makukuha. Binrief muna kami ni Miguel bago kami pumasok sa hide. Pinaalalahanan na hanggat maaari ay huwag gumawa ng kahit anong ingay. Tapos ayun, pumasok na kami sa loob at nag-set up ng mga gamit. Maya-maya, sa isang baging sa kaliwa ko, may dumapo na na isang red-eared parrot finch. Nagstay muna ang red-eared parrot finch sa may baging at nagtingin-tingin sa paligid bago ito dumiretsyo sa pugad. At yun nga, nagsimula na siyang magpakain at umalingaw-ngaw sa gubat ang huni ng mga inakay. Maliit lang ito, about 10 centimeters. Mas malaki pa ang mga maya o Eurasian tree sparrow. Pero sa vantage namin, kitang-kita ang mga distinguishing features niya. Ang bluish indigo na ulo niya, na may red sa gilid, at ang kanyang red tail. 
Alam nyo ba na ang mga red-eared parrotfinch ay dito lang sa Mindanao matatagpuan, sa mga lugar na 1,000 meters above sea level and above. Very limited ang range nila at isa ang living laboratory ng RSKBC sa mga mabibilang na sites na pwede silang makita. Itong mga species na ito ay recently lang din bumalik sa area after ilang taon. Ang living laboratory ng RSKBC ay isang conservation site din. Unang-unang conservation measure na ginawa rito ay ipatigil ang kahit anong klase ng hunting. Para hindi mawala ng livelihood yung mga locals na dating nag ang ilan sa kanila ay mga field guides at assistants dito sa RSKBC. Dahil dito, unti-unting nagbalik ang mga ibon at iba pang hayop dito sa area. Kabilang na nga ang red-eared parrot finch. Hindi gaanong napag-aaralan ang mga red-eared parrot finch. Kahit dito sa Kennedy Guide, ang nakalagay ay nest and eggs unknown. Salamat Miguel for this awesome new field guide. Ang nangyayari dito sa living laboratory ng RSKBC ay isa sa mga pioneering studies tungkol sa nesting and breeding behavior ng mga ibon na ito. After makakain ng mga chicks, tumahimik ng paligid at nagantay ulit kami. Habang nagaantay, nakaramdam kami ng gutom. Buti at pinabaunan kami ni Miguel ng mga snacks at vegan sandwiches. Thank you nga pala kala Ate Liling and Ate Charlene. Yun, kaya hindi kami nagutom. Napansin namin na mag-iisat kalahating oras nang nakalipas after nung first feeding. Tapos maya-maya, may shape na pumasok sa frame ng camera. Nagulat ako kasi malaki at light-colored ang bagong dating na ito. Yun pala, isa itong Besra. Ang Besra ay isang raptor at kumakain ito ng mga maliliit na ibon. Amis na amis kami kasi ang lapit lang niya sa amin eh. Buong akala namin ay tamang dapo lang ang gagawin niya. Pahinga lang, ganun. Pero yun pala, maibang balak itong Besra na to. Biglang kumiling yung ulo niya sa direksyon ng pugad ng mga red-eared parrot finch. Grabe, dahil sa magkahalong kaba at excitement, hindi ko na napindot ang record sa video. Bago tayo tumuloy sa mga susunod na pangyayari, i-reiterate ko lang na ang area kung nasaan tayo ngayon, ang living laboratory ng Robert S. Kennedy Bird Conservancy, ay isang conservation site. At dahil papaunti na lang ang bilang ng mga red-eared parrot finch, in fact, categorized as near-threatened ang mga ito. These birds take precedence as far as conservation is concerned. For comparison, ang Besra ay least concerned. Dito sa clip na to, makikita na hindi nag-record yung main camera namin. Pero makikita rin dito na nakapasok yung ulo ng Besra sa pugad. Sa mga panahong ito, hindi namin alam kung anong gagawin. Hindi ito kasama sa briefing kanina eh. Dahil mukhang hindi naman ito laging nangyayari o nasasaksihan ng mga observers. And then... Narinig namin si Miguel na kunyari ay umubo. Gumawa na siya ng ingay para mabugaw ang Besra. Noong una medyo na-confuse ako sa mga nangyari pero at the same time, relieved din. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you've seen uh, with your very eyes something so stunning and unnerving so unnerving and goosebumps yes and something um, usual or regular um, birders will not see because um, something an event like a, a besra a predator attempting to prey on uh, birds uh-huh. is something that birders don't normally see because besra is afraid of people yep. okay now it's a big bird and it's prior to strict implementation of wildlife laws um, there was really uh, very few uh, Besra's around because Besra is um, illegally traded yeah uh, it's a beautiful bird it you've seen it's a very attractive bird and so <laughs> it's it's poached and kept illegally as pets mm-hmm. and people use it also for uh, quote-unquote falconry and of course, it's hunted for food. Now, with preservation of habitats, of everything in the habitat, we've seen also a proliferation 
of predators. predators and an increased number of wild boar. Yeah. Um, and something like this requires a judgment call for conservationists. We have here a vulnerable species. I believe it's a near-threatened species, uh, the red-eared parrot yeah, finch, that has been marked by a Bessera, Thank which you. is a least concerned species. And so, as conservationists, we have to make a judgment call. The red-eared parrot finch, the chicks, the nest has been marked by uh, Bessera, as, as we saw. The bird, the Bessera, took a peek yeah. uh, yes. inside the nest and mm -hmm. saw the chicks and the pupillary response, and the constriction and the in intent look. Um, it was a sign. It was, it's a sign that uh, he saw the chicks and it was about to snatch the chicks. <laughs> yes. I myself, I'm guiding you, but I also had to make the judgment yeah. call to uh, make some noise and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. shoo the desert away. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not the parent birds of the pirate finch return within one hour, um, we have to do something about the chicks. Now, um, uh, as a uh, bird rescue and rehab facility, we have the means to raise these chicks to adulthood and release them back. You are certified the by the DNR. Yes, uh, we have a memorandum of agreement with DNR, um, signed uh, I don't know in 2016. And so, let's do not just sustainable uh, birding, or but let's do eco protective. Yes. Yeah. Good. So, wala na yung Bessera, we have, let's give it one hour. Let's hope na lang bumalik, mm -hmm. kahit once. Basta nagta, kanina, akala ko may ahas, which is very rare here. Mm -hmm. But the, the, You can hear me. Yeah. On, the, on my left. Mm -hmm. And it was like uh, an alarm call. Mm -hmm. so, did the parent bird see a snake or something? I was really looking for a snake. Uh, looking around. And bigla na lang, this wow. bird. Mm -hmm. Gulat yung gabi. Oh. Ba't iba yung kulay? <laughs> and malaki. Tapos I, I remember pag gabi. Oh, parang best na kasi I remember ako. It didn't fit nga in my camera eh. Oh. 600 millimeter eh. <laughs> this is really just amazing. Patapos ang briefing na ito, hindi muna kami agad bumalik sa hide. Nagstay muna kami sa labas para siguraduhin na bugaw na yung Besra. Mga 5 minutes din bago kami pumasok. After that, we decided to go back to the hide at magantay ng 1 to 2 hours para bigyan ng chance yung parent birds na pakainin muli yung mga inakay. All right. Okay, so let's let's see if the parent birds return. The the chicks are long due for feeding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Long due. Um the, the interval is one and a half uh, to 2 hours, but because the earth free, it could should be more frequent. Mm. Okay. But it's been the last time it was fed was 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. And there are three chicks to feed. So uh, it should have been back long, uh, long ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what an experience. Yes, yes, I must say. I must say. After one and a half hour, bumalik na ang parent bird.
na rin sa feeding routine ng parent bird ang paglilinis ng pugad para hindi maipon yung mga dumi ng inakay. Sa footage na ito, makikita nyo na may dala yung parent bird na mukhang puting string. Ito ay tinatawag na fecal sac. Tinatanggal ito ng parent bird after every feeding. Astig, no? Matapos magpakain itong parent bird na to, maya-maya meron na naman ulit. Napansin namin na iba yung behavior nito kaysa dun sa unang nagpakain. Ang theory namin, ito yung isa pang parent bird. After an hour, tinawag kami palabas ni Miguel. Yun pala, the Besra is back. Kaya tinawag na niya ang team niya to start the nest retrieval. This is industry grade. Uh, incubator for for eggs uh, uh, for nests that uh, whose parent birds have been preyed on. So um, this is uh, we have consultants and colleagues uh, from the aviculture uh, scene who uh, help us with this, and also um, professional zookeepers uh, abroad. Now, <clears throat> when after the eggs hatch, we have a brooder. A brooder is uh, where you put uh, chicks and there's ventilation and it's also temperature uh, controlled and the temperature varies according to species and the age of the chicks. So, and they both have alarms for in case there's a power outage mm -hmm. to drop in temperature and of course we have a generator okay. um, yes. that turns on within 10 minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. So they are not hypothermic. Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. And we will uh, get the AVR and then uh, set the te temperature. Uh, so, may ceremonies tayo. So basically, let's look at the expiration date. It's 2023, uh, February 8, 2023. So, um, this is um, the most uh, commonly used uh, hand feeding formula. Uh, very reliable. So, of course, even if it's brand new, uh, we have to check. So, visually okay. Visually okay. Ba? And then, that we that. Taste. Dapat hindi siya rancid. Yeah, it mm. Good. Okay, so let's just prepare the mix. Oh. Yeah, they're very active. Probably hungry. Yes. So, um, it's going to be a struggle to get them out through a small opening, so we really enlarge it. We measured the opening canina already, mm -hmm. so that should be fine. And then, we me get them. No, their instinct uh, basically is to, yeah. under threat, is to be silent. Be silent. That's what they did with the best friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's one. Hello. All right, so he's very hungry. Um, look at this, the crop, and it's completely empty. This is the crop. It should be a little bit. Uh, if it's full, you'll, you'll see. Okay. Now, 
it's kind of weak and hungry. So what we're gonna do is, hey, all right. So basically, just open. Okay, once open, just make sure it's not in the throat, in the lungs, and it's in the stomach. Watch the crop. of swallowing reflex. Okay. Sarap. <laughs> Sarap talaga to. With probiotics. So, that's all we're gonna give. And then, if he's healthy, he's gonna probably poop. Are you gonna poop? No? Okay. Oh, he wants to cuddle because he's he's happy. Oh. All right. Okay, there. Beautiful. Oh, there. Pooped. Oh. oh. So yun yung okay. dirty mood. Yeah. The parent. Yes. So as you can see, it's very dry. So medyo kulang talaga siya ng hydration because it's been a, mm. it hasn't been fed because mm -hmm. of that desra. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so and it's very little. So okay. Dito muna yan because, although of course I will, we will know which one hasn't been fed because uh, of the crop. Oh, is your stomach too heavy? <laughs> huh? Why are you laying down like that? What's the yung nito niya, yung blue? Here? Those are called uh, gate papillae. Mm -hmm. um, there have been theories as to what that is. What those are for. But those are just theories. They say it's for the parents to see the bird inside the nest, but nothing can be more ridiculous than, than that. <laughs> mm. Of course, the parents can see the bird. So, wala pong definitive answer. Wala, wala. Okay, hey, it's your turn. your turn. Your brother says it's yummy. So open your mouth. Can you tell that they're another sexy? Oh, the male and female are the same. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. Tama na, tama na. Sige na. Busog na, busog na. <laughs> okay. Oh, dami na. <laughs> uh, we um, actually make a lot. It's not that we want to waste, but it takes longer for it to cool, cool down mm. when it's a lot. Unless, unlike, uh, uh, whereas if you just make a little, uh, it's gonna be too cool by the time you. Uh, finish feeding so the others so they, they like it warm it has to be warm otherwise the thing um, food um, can cause hypothermia it's like a bolus of ice that's given to a baby oh. so yeah like now there's a little bit of resistance there should, shouldn't be otherwise when it gives suddenly, um, 
it's gonna squirt like a jet stream inside and it's gonna injure the the guts. Yeah, the guts are very yeah, to look them on the end. Yes. Oh. Where's the other one? I just took out two, right? Yes. yes. At this point, we really thought there were three chicks inside. For reference, here's a photo of our good friend me who went to the site before us. Dito kitang kita na tatlo yung chicks. I better call Dinos. Maybe because I'm sure they also didn't check because the opening is very small. Mm. Oh my gosh. Kita. No, none, ba? Yeah, one mistaken. Maybe even possibly on the first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I have a picture na nasa loob na yung ano eh. Yung mm -hmm. eh. Let, let's review the videos. So, sometimes kasi, I think besos are really fast. Um, oh, you want to hug also? <laughs> Uh, they, they they like the warmth because yeah. don't worry I'm, I mm. the nest because it's cold eh. okay mm. sige na sige na and uh, this the wet you uh, know helps with uh, what you call this the humidity so we're gonna close this again so they don't dry up. Because this is a fan, although there's a uh, liquid. Um, nevertheless, we don't want the chicks to dehydrate. So let's review the video after this. Huh? Because uh, I'm a little bit disturbed. At the same time, uh, I think it makes sense. It makes sense that we what we did was the right thing. Okay, let's go back to our footage of the first feeding and see how many chicks there were. Ayun, dalawa na nga lang ang chicks sa nest. From this, we can conclude na yung na-witness naming pagbisita ng Besra ay maaaring hindi pala niya unang beses. Nakakuha na siya ng isang chick before tayo makarating sa observation site. Hi! Kinabukasan, sumama kami kay Miguel sa DNR upang i-report ang mga pangyayari. Nakakahanga at nakaka-inspire ang efforts ng Robert S. Kennedy Bird Conservancy. Sa experience namin na yon, mas naintindihan ko na ang true conservation ay multifaceted. Ang daming factors na kailangang isaalang-alang at balansihin. Bukod sa scientific at practical knowledge, kailangan din ng matinding pangunawa at pasensya. Importante yung mga to para pagkailangan gumawa ng judgment call, like what Miguel did, hindi ka mapaparalyze. Na-affirm din yung katotohanan na ang conservation ng wildlife ay conservation ng wild places o yung habitat nila. Yun ang tunay na conservation. Ika nga ni Miguel at ng RSKBC. Eco-protective at eco-restorative. Grabe. Ang daming nangyari, no? Ang intense. Ini-imagine ko lang dati yung experience na ganito, eh. At heto na nga, nangyari na. Feeling ko nag-level up ako ng ilang beses. Sobrang thankful kami kay Miguel, our kindred spirit. At sa team niya, Sir Robert S. Kennedy Bird Conservancy, sa pagpapaunlak at pagpapa-experience sa amin ng living laboratory. Abangan niyo sa susunod na episode yung isa pang ibon na i-observe namin dito sa RSKBC Living Laboratory. Ito yung tinagari ang Most Secretive Bird of the Philippines. Yun! Salamat sa panonood at pagsama sa amin. Sana nag-enjoy kayo sa adventure na to. Comment down below. Kwentuhan tayo. Kita-kit soon! Bye-bye you!